I'm Liz Gunn, and today is November the 18th, 2024. If you see this message, it's because on November the 19th, 2024, I am up for sentencing at the Manukau District Court under Judge Janie Forrest, who found me guilty for very lightly touching the arm of an airport worker who came to ask why we were carrying a camera in the airport. She would not listen to the explanation I repeated over and over that we were not a commercial organization, that we were doing it all voluntarily. And when she wouldn't listen or look at me, she kept talking to me, but looking at Jonathan, the cameraman, I lightly touched her on the arm and said, excuse me, twice. You can see it here. Sorry, camera? sorry, could excuse please, me. Could you please excuse me? What what is what is the law? What is the law? Could you please? No, no, what is the law that you're could doing you this under? You only... I'm asking for everybody in this country, for yourselves as well as for me, for your families, as well as for my family and friends, to stand up and say this is not right. Don't just pass by this message. It is not right on so many fronts. I reached out as a lawyer to somebody I know as another lawyer, and this was my question. I won't say their name. Out of 100, how confident do you feel about my getting a positive outcome tomorrow with Judge Janie Forrest? And he wrote back and said, this is a lawyer. If it was anyone else, Liz, I'd say close to 100. But there are lots of things which I don't think were right. You being charged at all was not right. You being charged and found guilty was not right. And that makes me unsure. I have hope, but I'm also cynical about a fair outcome. So when a lawyer is writing that to me, I thought I need to get a message to you all. Have a look at the hypocrisy of this. We were holding a camera and I could prove that we weren't doing it as a money-making operation. We were there to help a family that we had got out of virtual prison on a remote Pacific island, the Tokelau's. They'd been held there for 14 months and the mother of the family was very close to a full breakdown. There was no establishing the story or the facts when the airport worker called the police. There was no de-escalation by the police. There was no interest in the truth. All I asked the police was, under what law are you doing this? What law have we breached? He grabbed my arms. He wrenched them behind my head brutally. Have a look at this from a week ago. And a man in his, I think, late 70s, and I'm in my 64th year. I'm a grandmother in my 64th year. I never, ever had any suggestion of threatening this officer. But look how quickly this man is thrown to the ground and his arms wrenched behind. This is the closest to what happened to me. Equally rough and quick and without any conversation and so disrespectful to the elders of society. It is so against everything that we were brought up with in New Zealand. And I could never understand why the judge never mentioned any of that. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. I am the the way where your vehicle was located, your vehicle was not like that. Sit down. No. You sit down. Get on the ground. Yeah, I'm gonna call an ambulance.
There was no trespass. We were never given a trespass warning. And in fact, when I was outside the airport, a third officer who did not have the courage to come forward and do the right thing and speak on our behalf and say what he really saw, he quietly approached me and said, look, we can make all this go away, Liz, if you will just say that you've done something wrong. So they were trying to frame me there. And I said, you know, I have done nothing wrong and let the cards fall where they may. Never in all of my life in New Zealand did I expect that New Zealand would fall so openly, so brazenly, so gravely to what is now called lawfare. And that is where the law is used against people who have the courage to speak the truth. I, I can't argue with you for whatever opinion you have of me, but I can tell you my heart. I have put four years of my life on the line for my country. I loved this country so much and I felt that I would do the honouring of those like my father and his friends who, and, and previous generations who went to World War I and World War II. My father was in Egypt and Greece and Crete. I would honour them by standing up for truth. I would use all of my skills being trained as a lawyer and of course my decade in mainstream media which I'm very ashamed of now. I was clearly it was a hit. It was a hit to get me out of the way. Why weren't those people who were part of a, an Indian convoy who came into New Zealand holding ceremonial swords about a month ago and being greeted by people waving swords, why were they not stopped at the airport? Why did Constable Postlethwaite not come in and within three seconds throw all of them on the floor when they're actually carrying weapons of violence and death? Ask yourself if this adds up. Whether you care about me or not, you need to care about the future of this country and about the possibilities of tyranny being put on your children's shoulders if one of them inadvertently touches someone in order to clarify, to gain eye contact, to simply ask. And also ask yourself why that airport footage that we got was so remote so obscured when there are hundreds if not thousands of cameras at the airport. There are so many questions about this whole trial that should worry you because it shows a real degradation of any justice in this country. So I'm going to put in slow motion me touching this woman which is being called assault and I'm going to ask you to send your views on how wrong this is that I've been even put through a trial on assault, been found guilty of assault, please help me overcome.